Hi, it's Helen O'Boyle, PR Officer for Greater Liverpool of Knowsley Branch. And this morning I'm joined with um, Kim Sunley, National Officer for Health, Safety and Wellbeing in the RCM. Thanks for joining us, Kim. Do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, hi, Helen. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. So, as you say, I'm National Officer at the RCM. I work in the Employment Relations team at the RCM, which is the trade union arm of the RCN. Mm -hmm. And my role is around um, health and safety of our members and working to improve their working environments and ensuring that employers are doing what they should be doing under health and safety legislation to create safer workplaces. A massive role then really isn't it? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely and a challenge uh, with uh, some employers. Yeah. Um, I think we see the good, the bad and the very ugly really. So. Yeah. Um, so the reason why we've asked you to join us this week is because um, we wanted to kind of highlight um, problems that nurses might be having in the workplace, um, especially at the moment, because there's such an increased use of gloves, hand washing. Um, so we just were wondering, um, what are the main causes of skin problems for nursing staff at work? Yeah, so Helen, you're right to identify hand washing and gloves and um, they are if you wash your hands, your hands uh, wash your hands more than 20 times a day, or your hands are in continuously in water for two hours or more, uh, then that is recognised as a high risk occupation mm -hmm. or developing uh, work related dermatitis. So uh, nursing is right up there with other occupations like hairdressing. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely, that's uh, what exposure to water, hand washing is, is one of the key factors. But yes, also gloves. So two things in gloves really, wearing gloves for long periods can start affecting the, uh, the skin barrier. Just if you, if you know anybody who wears gloves for any, any period of time, particularly in humid conditions, the skin starts to go soggy and the natural barriers break down. But also things called accelerators in gloves can cause uh, problems um, for people's skin. So, um, and then there's a whole kind of, a, sort of a bit of a, a sort of cocktail of uh, toxic um, chemicals and things that nurses were exposed to so disinfectants um some specialist areas where drug exposures can cost can cause irritation as well so so yeah there's say a whole cocktail of um of substances that can cause problems and i think um you know it's always been there skin problems have always been there for nurses mm -hmm. but i think as you say with everything that's going on at the moment the focus on hand hygiene um, focus on glove use. I think um, you know we're seeing uh, lots more issues uh, from from members, and even the general public are starting to talk about sore hands. So um, you know, I, I suppose it's one thing they're washing their hands, but uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's it's an issue for everybody at the moment. Um, and what what should nurses look out for um, it, with regards to kind of hand health? What would they start noticing? Yeah, so it's it's really important um, uh, that you know you try and pick up some early warning signs. Um, we uh, we did a recent survey of our members. Actually, this is before uh, the COVID pandemic, and um, forty six percent of the members who responded to the survey it was over over fifteen hundred members found the condition of the skin and the hands was poor or very poor in the previous twelve months, and ninety three percent of them had at least one one symptom of skin problems. So redness dryness and itching were the kind of early warning signs so um you know particularly between the um the gaps in the fingers um and tips of the fingers and um or anywhere really on the skin but those are kind of early warning signs and then you know if they're not sort of tackled or sometimes even if you do try and tackle them then they can go on to develop sort of cracks thick fissures in the skin and that can be really difficult if you're in that position for them to, you know, to heal and sometimes you will need to take time off work to actually heal the, the hands so yes it's really important that we try and catch any problems early yeah i've been in that position where um i used to clump my shifts together because i used to travel to london as you know and i used to end up with horrendous cracks and and sores all over my hands by the end of the week and it was extremely painful and then after seeing occupational health and they they said you know we might have to look at redeployment you get then get that added stress it's such a, yeah. a a difficult um kind of issue to tackle isn't it absolutely and we know we nurses, nurses don't nursing staff don't like taking time off we know that 
vocal presenteers and for coming to work, then perhaps we should be better, be better off at home is a real issue. So, um, so yes, we, we know that that's a problem. And I think, again, that was identified a bit in our survey, but I guess the real concern is that then you have, you know, potentially you can um, have colonisation of bacteria in your skin and um, that is a risk to you and the risk to your patients. So it's a really tricky one. So that's what we say. Well, there's steps you can take to protect your skin and also, you know, if you are having problems, seek some advice and help through occupational health or your GP. What should employers do to reduce the risk to staff? Well, employers should um, be avoiding exposure to the things that cause, looking to avoid exposure to things that cause um, dermatitis for nursing staff. Um, and that's easier said than done because you can't avoid hand washing. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit more of a challenge in the health sector. You can't always avoid glove use. Um, some areas like um, some disinfecting processes like uh, endos endos endoscopy, uh, cleaning, you know, that can be a process that's enclosed. Mm. Um, so you're not ex exposed to the chemicals that are used to clean the endoscope. So that's one way of an avoiding exposure. And we know, looking back probably 10, 20 years ago, that that wasn't so much the case. The aldehydes that we used to clean and end endoscopes were sort of swished around everywhere and uh, used, um, and they caused asthma and they caused um, uh, contact dermatitis as well. So, so enclosing a process like that can reduce exposure to some of those chemicals. Mm -hmm. But um, glove use, hand washing is, is is still an issue. So, really, um, employers should have a, a health surveillance program in, program in place. So they should be. Uh, giving staff information uh, around what uh, what warning signs to look for, they should have a program of skin checks. So somebody should be trained up to do skin checks, to, you know, to just you know during a like a supervision session or something, just checking on each other's hands, um, and then really knowing uh, how to escalate problems to occupational health. The other thing that's really important is the provision of um, hand creams mm -hmm. containing emollients on the wards and. Also for community staff as well should should have sort of individual tubes. Um, and the other thing, and it sounds silly, but and I know, you know, it's second nature to nurses, but you know, making sure that hand washing is carried out properly. I don't know. I I was watching uh, an early video of Boris Johnson doing some hand washing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, he just went straight and put the soap on first, uh, the hand wash on first, and then went. Um, went went to the water. So, and I know again, it should be second nature to nurses to wet the hands first, then use the soap. But um, it's just things like that, you know. If, if you're, uh, um, um, it's really important. Um, so yeah, so moisturise that. You know, providing moisturisers, um, hand moisturisers at work, is really important. Um, I know again, it's an issue, particularly for some community staff and some of our members working in uh, social care environments that they're not necessarily given. Yeah. The hand creams that they should be um and well i think you've kind of touched there on like what nurse and staff should be doing to protect themselves so i suppose it is the use of good moisturizers isn't it and washing hands properly yeah absolutely you know moisturize 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 and i know it's really hard on a, a long shift and if you're not having your breaks but you know if, you, if and when you do go off on a break you know just moisturize then moisturize certainly at the end of the shift and you know during your days off try and get into the habit of using it and you know if you are particularly having you know some real problems then um uh moisturizer overnight on your hands and cotton gloves over over that and you know if you're having a few days off and you and they are looking for a long stretch they are looking really poorly then um you know that that's an idea um so and, and you know if you are worried speak to occupational health or your GP if they're, if they're not healing yeah I know last year um you had the fringe event at congress congress is a good time to kind of catch people isn't it to help um reinforce these messages isn't it and and, and share good practice um you also do um a hand in glove week isn't it um could you tell us a little bit about about that yeah, so Club Awareness Week um, started probably about two years ago now. Well, actually, this would be the this would have been the third year, and um, it was sort of a, a meeting of minds really be, between our professional nursing lead um, on infection prevention control, Rose Gallagher, who was concerned around um, ex, 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 sort of 
inappropriate use of gloves. So gloves being used to make clean beds, um, sometimes in the community, uh, care workers coming out of their cars wearing gloves. Um, so, um, and that was because of the risk of dermatitis, but it was also about sustainability issues of excessive glove use. So that's still very much an issue and um, an issue that we potentially will be revisiting. Obviously, you know, the current the pro time we're in now, it, it, glove use is, is still really, really important and we can't eliminate glove use or reduce glove use at, at the moment, certainly. Um, so, yeah, so, and I, or, you know, I myself and our UK Safety Reps Committee were particularly concerned about um, hand dermatitis and nurses as well. So we got together and um, had the theme of, you know, glove aware, make sure that you're using gloves appropriately, but also make sure that you're using your skin, uh, so you're protecting your skin properly as well. So we brought together uh, occupational health nurses, infection prevention control, clinical procurement, and UK, uh, our safety reps as well came along. And I I think Helen, you came to one of the events. Um, so, um, yeah, so it was really trying to get everybody to be more joined up in how we how we address these issues. Mm -hmm. And it coincides with um, World Hand Hygiene Day at the end of April. Uh, I can't remember, I can't remember the exact date. Um, it coincides with uh, either the end of April or beginning of May, World Hand Hygiene Day. Um, so, and again, there's some concern that the focus on gloves people you know it does sometimes undermine hand hygiene as well so yeah um so yeah lots of lots of issues and areas that you know addressed by proper glove use and um skin care as well yeah it is such an important issue and i think um you have got your toolkit coming out haven't you soon yeah so um because of the covid um issues uh, obviously that fell right in the middle of what we had planned to do a glove awareness week so we've kind of put that to one side this year but we have got lots more revised and refreshed resources on our website so uh, if you go rcn slash skin health uh, it will take you to resources so we have uh, a poster there helen which uh, um you you're very well yes <laughs> you're very aware of so helen you can't be, um when your hands were very sore you can be uh modelled your hand for us so we've used that as a poster that can be downloaded and put up on uh, walls clinics any area to just make people aware of um, looking for the early warning signs and what to do we've got a more comprehensive um, guidance called do the trade which talks about appropriate skill of use and, and hand care and um, we've also this year actually we also got a really useful um, top tips on uh, PPE so FFT3 face mask Okay. and pressure uh, and we know that's obviously been causing lots of skin problems as well so there's a useful top tips there around um, hydration two hour breaks that sort of thing so that's really important um, and then the final um, thing is toolkit so we've got an online learning resource which we're being which is being developed mm -hmm. um, which should be out by certainly the beginning of July which okay. got podcast uh, webinar for safety reps and um, an online learning tool um, just to, yeah, about the um, physiology of skin and, and uh, the mechanisms of dermatitis as well so so yeah so lots lots there and I think you know we will keep this um, keep the campaign going in, in some form or another yeah um, and is it is it something that um, I was really interested in what you said about actually having um, a member of staff who can be kind of trained to, to look at hands. Would that be just your safety reps or is that actually something you think we should get more people involved with? Uh, so I think it's, it's ironic really, isn't it? I think in some industries, um, like for example, food production, um, where you know people are uh, got their hands immersed in water on a food production line or uh, you know, exposure to sort of chemicals on a they actually are quite, quite a lot better at doing this skin surveillance. So the health and safety executive um, and the, the COSH regulations require um, the employer to train up a responsible person to oversee a skin surveillance program. So mm -hmm. that responsible person will then do the skin checks on a regular basis. And um, that responsible person can be, um, you know, can be anybody, it can be a peer, it could be a safety rep, could be a manager. Um, and um, obviously sort of training and awareness on how to do 
skin checks, skin health surveillance. So, uh, and that's something we're putting into our new online toolkit. So there's going to be like a competency framework. We work with occupational health um, nurses who are in our public health forum to develop that as well. So hopefully that will kind of raise the whole awareness issue around um, around uh, skin checks, competent person. But I think you're right that that sort of peer to peer thing, you know, saying to your colleague, oh, your hands look a bit sore, you know, you you put put some hand cream on. It's almost like, you know, uh, that can be as effective. Um, just looking out for each other, really. Yeah, which I think definitely at this time we need more than ever, don't we? Mm -hmm. Not just for our hand health, but our mental health and our general health and wellbeing, don't we? Absolutely. I think I forgot to say about hydration as well, obviously. You know, we've heard horror stories of nurses having to go 12 hour shifts without access to drinking water. And hopefully um, this, you know, the crisis that we're in now is, is, is starting to tackle some of those issues. And I think, you know, organisations seem to be much more aware about the need for rest, hydration, fuel um, for nursing staff and the whole, whole, whole clinical team. So uh, hydration is obviously a really important factor for protecting the skin on your hands uh, and, and your face as well. So that's really important. Thank you very much, Kim, for joining us. I think, um, yeah, we will share everything that comes out. And I think if everybody shares and, and, and looks at those toolkits when they're available, then we can certainly put the focus on our health and um, hopefully improve that. Great. Thank you, Helen. Thank you again for inviting me. And, uh, Thank you. Okay, so we'll see you all later. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.